Hello and welcome back to Snow Runner and our hard mode series. You join us in Island Lake and we are delivering our cargo up to fixing the antenna, I believe it is. We have a little look. Broken antenna, yes. Ooh. What was that? That was a bit naughty from the get-go, wasn't it? Oh, we haven't known that, thank you very much. So we are, I believe we're starting a little bit earlier today than what we normally do. I think we finished earlier last time. It was a bit of a strange one because we started late, finished early. So perhaps the episode seems a little bit short by about two minutes. But that's, uh, that's just the way these things go sometimes. Now actually, before I uh, head in there, yeah, it's 7.50, it's not that early, is it? We, we want to turn in this one. Again, I often miss my turn-ins, so we'll... Uh, just mark that up so I know where I'm going in. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Hope you've had a pleasant day. I'm trying to think about my schedule. I think this is going to be coming out on a Sunday afternoon, so hopefully you have a good weekend. Hope the weather is good for you. We need good weather. There we go, this is what I'm missing. Bit of diff lock. Oh no, not a bit of diff lock. Game says no, no diff lock. Not today, sir. So we've got our White Western. It is um, our workhorse at the minute. I believe after this job, though, we're going to be jumping to the other uh, Western Twin Stair. For some, uh, for some nice little jobbies on that one. They change, getting something different. It's, I mean, it's it's the nature of the beast with Michigan. You're either in the Fleet Star, you're in the White Western, or if you've got a big load, you're probably in your uh, Pacific. It's just how it is. Until we get deeper into the game and onto a few more maps and have some more trucks that we can shuffle about and bring into different maps and swap out. Or, heaven forbid, have enough money to ever buy something new. <laughs> we, we may be... We might be Western Star, Fleet Star, all the way through. You never know. You never know how this is going to turn out. We have to keep selling all our trucks to buy fuel, because we're not very good at managing our fuel. Speaking of which... We've got fuel, fuel around here somewhere. Somewhere. It's all this all-wheel drive diff lock business. As you're consuming your fuel. It's why it's nice to have, have a truck at some point. Nice to have a truck where it's... Um, always on, always on diff lock, always on all wheel drive, at least always on all wheel drive. Because then your your base fuel consumption takes into consideration that it's always on all wheel drive. As opposed to uh, a rear wheel drive truck. That's that's what the consumption is set at. So doing all wheel drive then obviously uses up a bit more fuel. Not being a, a mechanic or engineer of any sort, I'm not sure how diff lock affects fuel consumption, but it probably does. What we need is some some nice bit of road so we can try and get into our high range and use a little bit less. Well, we're still at like 16. Thousand litres, so we're getting a lot of wheel spin, I reckon, in high range, so that's the trouble. It's the wheel spin that gets you. So 
sometimes again if you've got this well planned out it's nice to come up here in one sweep like to visit the antenna and already have this on the back but more often than not most people will come up here with a scalp as we did but there we go 1200 not 140 xp how are we doing for xp we're almost there almost level 15. we are getting there so for now i'm not going to head too far with this because i think i'm going to want this up this end later on i've got a feeling i'm going to want this here I know I am because we're going to want this in Drummond at some point, but we're going to want this here. We'll just get it out to the track, to the main track anyway. The suspension killing rocks is mine then. They will have you, and they will have you hard. The winch usage as well. Winch usage is high on fuel consumption. No one's complained that I don't have all the HUD up to seal that stuff, but I don't like it. I like this clean. It's clean. We know. We know what we're doing. Roughly. We need to see stuff, we can just pop it up. 84 litres, oh boy Joe. I'm sure we have a fuel trailer up at the gateway. We do. But we're, we're good for now. Because I believe our next little jobby, flame and barrels, we need to do that, is going to be um, instruments of development, I believe. Yes, the three drilling equipment. So we have to go out. I believe we go out and we pick one from each. Although that might not necessarily be the case. I'm sure I've done this where I've just picked one from here and one from here, two from here and one from there. But anyway, so that's, that's our next job. And this pays out six grand and it gives us warehouse access so then once that's done we have access to this warehouse which just gives us like drilling equipment i think but anyway that's what we that's what we're doing and for that we are going to be in twin steer because that's why this truck is here that is why it's on the map and we want to take our first right let's make sure we are fueled up we are indeed now I've got to be careful with this. And um, I've recently started using this quite a bit on my console save for different things. But that one is nicely tuned up now by the time I start sort of really using it for different jobs. And I've got, got to be mindful that this is not going to have the abilities that mine does. And again, I think I said this before when we went first got this. In the past, this has been one, because I've never really, never done hard mode before, this is one that I've always completed the task for to get, recovered it back to garage, and quite often sold it. But obviously that's, that's not really feasible, and... You know, over the last year, I've watched more SnowRunner content than I ever had before. In the in the previous sort of three years of playing, or two and a half years of playing the game, didn't really watch it, anyone else. Not that I watch a lot of people play it, but didn't watch anyone play it, and certainly didn't watch other people's like ranking trucks and guides to trucks or anything like that. 
over the last sort of eight months, let's say, I've watched quite a bit of them. In fact, I've probably watched all of them. And yeah, this is get this tuned up as I now well know. This is my is get this tuned up, and this is a, a fun little thing to use. Unfortunately, no all-wheel drive, and obviously differs way down in here. We need a better gearbox and stuff for it, which is why I, I tried to get mine tuned up as soon as I could. And again, on the on the playthrough that I have on the console, it's in normal mode, so it was all a lot easier to have done. But I did this with it still in its basic form, so we should be alright. But it was, it was a while ago. I think when we did this on the did this job on the stream series, I think I had one of them one of them juicy um, F seven fifties, a modified F seven fifty that could do absolutely everything. But that's because we were just trying to get through here as quick as possible. So we have got we've got to pay for this. There's no way of manually loading this. So this is another hundred and fifty. I think we paid hundred and fifty or a hundred for um, a crate for the antenna. Oh, this bad boy is now ready to go. Look at that. Nice. Now, I'm not sure how suitable this would be for Alaska, because there's some large cargoes in Alaska. Again, preempt and getting way ahead of myself because when I completed Alaska I didn't I did a lot of Alaska with my very long board and some people that I've seen do Alaska do a lot of Alaska still with the White West so there are a lot of options although there's some really good trucks there I guess the Derry Longhorn is it's thirsty and it's not great although there's well, Alaska's quite hilly and it's got some Quite steep inclines in the ice and the snow, and you get the dairy longhorn in Alaska. It's it's not that great on on the inclines and on the hills, so I, I think that's why others tend to stick with other other trucks and other vehicles. Now, some some people with the P16 in a, in Alaska instead of the dairy as well. Lord knows what I'll do when we get to Alaska. We myself with excitement that we've actually progressed, probably. <laughs> we'll claim it as completed. Job done. Completed. Completed Michigan on the hard mode. Game completed. But yeah, the twin stay when it's um, tuned up and got some good engine in it and gearbox and what have you actually moves as well. It's pretty, pretty quick. Not the quickest, but pretty quick. And we'll grab fuel. We grab fuel every time we go past. It's just what we do. Throwing out the winch for a security measure. Oh. Oh, man, it nearly got, nearly got me, nearly got me there. Look, what is going on? I was about to say I've never rolled this truck. <laughs> Though it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> There, oh there, it's coming. Now, if we roll this, we're going to have to get a truck out with that big crane on to pick this up. <laughs> uh, a proper recovery job. Oh, dear. Yeah, it looked like it wanted to go there. I've never had that before. <laughs> 
It's because I was all confident and just chatting away. get free. Again, it's one of those things. So, although I try and feel like I need to rush, we don't need to rush. It takes as long as it takes. So that's one. So the next one we want will be out there. So we'll just well a regular way. We'll try and uh, yeah, we'll try and turn here, I think. Although now I'm butt up against that, so I'm not gonna get no turn, am I? If I wanted to park it like that, I would never have gotten it that close. And judging by how well <laughs> things are going, I anticipate these three deliveries to take much of the 24 hours. <laughs> through here a few times and it gets rough. to remember not to try and cut that corner next time. <laughs> cut this one instead. Grab a pinch. And as you can imagine, a big like this, the turning circle isn't quite great. Not at all. It's not down that one, is it? No, it's down there. Down the next one. We come out of that one. Not the next one either, is it? Let's mark it up. Because I will get it wrong if not. Driving around somewhere I don't need to be. I 
but I do believe some of the mods for this, not the mods, some of the upgrades for this, sorry, um, don't come in until uh, some of the DLC maps, I think. So they were sort of added in as the game grew uh, to make the truck more capable, I guess, in later maps. So that has me thinking that we're definitely going to be using it again, and we're going to keep hold of it. If only for a change, like just pulling a four or five slot semi trailer. This is just uh, something different. To say the least, it's something different. Now, getting up and down here can be fun. Especially when you lose all traction because you've only got drive on those rear wheels. I don't remember being this confused by it though last time. slide down and then reverse back. Rather than going with too much actual drive and uh, coming down to force and roll on it. Let gravity do its thing. You know, the downside to a truck that doesn't really turn <laughs> is that you can't get around in tight corners. Honestly, it'll be fun watching me get out of the top. I'll be one for everyone. But sometimes having the extra weight on the back can be a benefit. I turn around to look at that. Easy to turn a jumbo jet. So again, another hundred and fifty. Get that all packed up in the back. We go on our jollies again. All fun. All fun and games. Obviously, the easiest, the easier. Oh, we're not starting the hill now, are we? You bugger. Absolute bugger. The easier option is to go right here. But then we've got hmm, greater risks with trying to 
uh, negotiate the bridges by the lumber yard. So I would have preferred to have been able to angle that to go left, but I don't, don't think that was going to happen. Whether I ever have or not, I, I couldn't remember. But I'm sure I've gone left there before. Unless you take the time to just turn around in here and chicken out on, on taking the bridges. Because we've got to do the bridges. Well, we haven't got to. That's the end. You've never got to do anything. You can always go whichever way you want. But it seems like the logical thing to do is when you come from afar over there to pick up the other one, it's to go through the lumber yard. Take this one as a trial run. That's what that'll be. If we roll though, I might cry. I might cry. Too emotionally invested in all this now. We've had too much to roll already. Take it slow and easy and see how it goes. Slow and easy. Again, we want to try and be nice and wide, I think. We want to make sure it acts on the bridge. Oh man. Oh, it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous so much. Avoiding that dip and then trying to go round. There's nothing about this that is going to be kind to me today, is there? It's not going to be kind. And there we go. We'll fight it every step of the way. Because it's just quite daunting. And the next one, when we come back for the third, if we kill that route, we've got to do it in the dark. Yeah, it's just dragging us. Come on. <laughs> this, this truck really needs all wheel drive. <laughs> really does. Yeah, the third one is, is going to come back the long route. <laughs> Just saying. I'm not going to do that in the dark. Call me chicken. I don't care. <laughs> no need. No need for that extra stress. And again, I've never felt insecure doing deliveries with this, but I feel like it's going to fall over on me. <laughs> it feels like it's going to fall over. Power, power, go, go. Come on. Well, that one doesn't want to. Give me one where I want it. Maybe we'll go sideways. Well, 
Again, a less, the lesson to be learned is I should probably be going alongside the power pylons, to be fair. Yeah, because I'm now stuck on a bloody root cluster or something again, I think. Or the, just the tip of the tree. myself over a little bit. We are not moving at all. There we go. Yeah, that third and final one's going to be hard work. <laughs> this can't be good. So there's someone done. So we're going to come out and round, just follow that round, and we'll just mark that up because it might be dark by the time we get there. And then it is this one, which again is on a slope. Even when we've not got a load, this is not easy to get through. I think the the White Western probably would be <laughs> more efficient. But we got this truck here, we want to use it. It's going to be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare to get back through. Churned up so much. So much churning. Just using the winch now to try and pull us around the corners a bit tighter. And it's, it's, it's mainly this contract why we have so much fuel out on the map spread out like we do because I know I get stuck and I use it all. Now this is where it would be nice to have a bit of high gear. But alas, we are not blessed. It feels super slow from inside. Not an awfully big cab, is it? Really. 
when you look at the size of the actual truck and then that cab space, not a lot. I'll be careful here, we will um, do some damage, no doubt. We have rocks, we have a few trees that normally respawn if they can. Oh, naughty. I imagine driving this is a little bit worse like driving a bus. With the, uh, the, the turning and everything. All the lack of. I have a bus simulator, I've never really played it. Perhaps we should give that a try, see if it is what driving the bus is all about. Let me know in the comments, should we do a little bit of bus simulator in between everything else that we do? Do you want to see me crash a bus? I think it's um, bus simulator 21, I believe. I'm not sure if it was picked up on a Steam sale or if it was uh, game with like uh, Amazon Prime, Prime Gaming thing. Uh, we'll grab some more fuel while we're here. That's what I'm hanging around for. Maybe I'll have a little go on it after this recording and see how long it takes to install. So we're turning right on this one. Oh, this one isn't the hill. This one, it's okay. It's all right. Although there is a hill, we have to remember to turn left as we approach the mound, I believe. That's where that track is. Seriously, bro. Come on. Up the hill. You definitely wouldn't use this in Alaska. <laughs> it just... No. Not unless it's got the all-wheel drive and everything tuned up. Rather than try to drive all the way around, will it be easier to just 
reverse up and point back out again. And I believe this one, uh, this one doesn't come down all the way. I think there's more to collect out of this one. I'm sure it's this one. Yeah. Some things I remember. Because I'm sure we have to take one of these loads into. What is it? Two? It might be two. One of these loads into. And Drummond Island and deliver to the port. I'm sure there's something we have to do. Slightest little tug might help us up, up and over. Let's go, go, go. Sort of momentum to help us on our way. I did say this delivery would take up much of the day. I think, you know, I was going to say, I think it's probably quite fuel efficient, but actually we only filled it up up here, didn't we? So under, under load and the sort of the strain it's having with the terrain. It's not the worst fuel-wise, I don't think. I think it could have had a larger capacity, though. It's got three fuel tanks on it. It's got two on this side and one on this side. Although I think pretty much all vehicles could do with having slightly larger fuel tanks. Either larger fuel tanks or just slightly improved uh, fuel economy. Or consumption. It's, they do seem to get through it a little bit too quick. But that's all part of the challenge. I think that's something we were talking about a while back on, on the live streams. Was how realistic fuel consumption is and, and fuel tank size in comparison. But it's because there's a... I think we first started talking about that when I added in the JBE load star uh, to that save. Uh, and so I, I asked the guys, you know, is this too unrealistic? Uh, just regarding the fuel. You know, some of the other little bits I weren't too fussed about. And um, one of the chaps said, no, that's, that's nothing. Like, he's got a friend, not a mate, um, with a much smaller truck that has double the capacity that I'm putting on on the Lodestar and the Lodestar is a big truck to be a scout 
as well. Let's not forget that. The, the Load Star is like the little sister to the Fleet Star. But I think that should be allowed and capable of doing a bit more than what it does. And it's a very capable truck. But that's why I like the JDE version. Because it allows it to be a little bit more capable. And it costs more than the, the standard base game. So I think it, you don't get those extras for free. So like that's one of the trucks I want to buy for Alaska. Uh, because I enjoyed using it in Alaska before. And yeah, I think like the base load star is, I think it's like... 68, 70 grand, or maybe not quite that much. Uh, but then the the modern uh, JBE load star set up the way I would like it to be set up costs around about 80, maybe even 90 grand. So you have to pay to have that extra. It's not like it's a free boost, and you know it they, it does have slightly larger fuel capacity and stuff like that. But also in in hard mode. I mean, you still have to fill it up, you still have to provide it with that fuel, you just go a little bit further without having to top it up, but it will get through it. You still need the same amount of fuel. And a sim that's a similar sort of thing with our, our Land Rover, really. You know, it's got good fuel, uh, not necessarily good fuel capacity in itself as a vehicle, but with the... Uh, the scout add-on for fuel and parts and stuff. Those tanks are pretty big. But you still have to fill it up, you still have to have that fuel initially to, to put in there. And what I like about some of the JBE um, modded truck versions of the trucks as well is that they utilize the cab space. So a lot of these trucks that have big cabs, like they put nothing in them, like when for your um, repair points and fuel and tires, Whereas the JBE trucks add that as an option, so you can put a few repair points and a little bit of fuel in your cab if there's space. It's not it's not like the uh, the big cheaty ones where suddenly you've got you know ten thousand meters of fuel on the roof, but you might be able to have an extra you know whatever hundred or so liters of fuel instead. Got confused coming in the dark. And I know, oh, 100 litres of fuel in your cab, that's crazy. But it, it allows you to add a little extra in there. And again, you have to pay for it. It's not free. I think as long as with the mods, as long as you're paying for all the extras and it's not free extras, then it's, it's sort of all right. And, you know, I want my hard mode and my other... You know, playthroughs to be, be different from other people. So, look, if everyone did their hard mode, just using the base stuff and everything you can get, which is obviously there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy watching them, but everyone would have the same, exact same playthrough, the exact same trucks to a, to a degree. Obviously, we all do things a little bit different, but you'd know that if coming into this map, we're going to see X, Y, and Z trucks because that's what you recover, that's what you get. So, if there's an opportunity to buy something. And they, they're few and far between opportunities, but an opportunity to buy something that's a bit different from what everyone else has used, then uh, I want to try and take it. And all the better if it's going to help me along a little bit. Jubbly. So, I don't want to have to have that hassle of worrying about tipping again. So, just going to be a little bit smart with, <laughs> with our manoeuvre, somewhat.
will not pinch me to the point that I want. It knows I want that post and it just wouldn't give it to me. Right, see that might have worked. That might have worked. Oh, let's get it again. That might work for us. Sometimes I think I prefer the rear winch because you can then direct your truck a little bit better still. Whereas if you've got a front winch, you're getting pulled in that way no matter what. And the game doesn't like to give you the winches that you necessarily hope for. It certainly doesn't me anyway. There we are, another job done. The warehouse is open and the Atega is now available to purchase, so we've obviously leveled up. Uh, 770 on the XP and um, under six grand on the job, though. Not a very well paying job, I think, because it's not necessarily overly difficult. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to, yeah. So 2,000 away from uh, 16 already. 86% of the way through Michigan. We're getting there, people. We are getting there. Only 8% of the way through the game, though. Right, so we do have flaming barrels, which is just picking up a delivery from there and, and bringing that across. Well, obviously, we need a crane for that. So that's not for now, is it? Um, Dyson Diesel Harbour Delivery. That's the one. Now, you can either pick up from here and take it to the harbour, or you can pick up from here which is what I'm thinking about doing unfortunately that fuel is maybe a little bit too far away which is a bit of a bugger would have been nice if that was closer so we, we might have to go up grab some fuel I'll leave the trailer we'll grab some fuel we'll come back hitch our trailer and then try and uh, get that from there Wait. There we go, that's on. What else? What else is there here anyway? So we've got logs for here. And um, we're not we're not anywhere near that yet. So yeah, harbour delivery. So take off. Yeah, we should be able to get under that just fine. But what was the time? Nearly five. So hopefully we'll have enough time to... Uh, well, see, we'll, we'll get some fuel in. Ooh. Probably pop a tyre. Hopefully get get down and get the, uh, the container in the back. And this time we'll be able to see how much easier the uh, the White Western start finds it. Actually, if we're going to fuel up, we might... Although it feels like it might be a waste of fuel, we might actually go and do that um, blazing or flaming barrel or whatever it's called. Since we've got the you know the crane in here, rather than take it all out and then have to come back in to do it, that might be what we look to do. What we do with refueling. It's nice to be in a truck that wants to turn for you.
try and mine the rocks. I'm sure something will catch us. Because it's up, it's up there, it's the flame of barrels. Shall we just get ready for that? Since, like I say, we are there, so let's. Try that that's your one. Make sure you hit the right turn. And again, I'm in and out of that map. I say so quick, like I'm speedy, so quick, I always forget to look at the bloody time. And as soon as daylight hits, I'm always saying, oh, don't, don't waste too much time. Try and get yourself set up ready for the next, the next sort of day. Let's get everything in position where we can. There's nothing saying we couldn't have used the twin stair to do the, um, other delivery into um, from an island, but I know that this is going to negotiate the the tracks in Drummond Island a little bit better than say the twin steer. I have done it with both, and I'm pretty sure. Although this, you know, inevitably is a bit longer. This is small. This is more manoeuvre. I'll go, man. This is more manoeuvrable. Don't know why we're travelling in low bus. We need to. I think it comes from the habit of Playing, playing my console safe because I just tend to always be in low plus. I'm in no rush for that. I, I jump between the three islands, the three islands, the three maps that I've opened up through other play. So I, I don't go ahead and like try out, I don't know, is there a Carolina? I don't go ahead and try out Carolina or um, Tennessee or anything like that. But I, I do jump between. Michigan, Alaska, and Timir on that. As soon once we got to Timir, I thought I would have a little play and look at that as well on there. So that save it still has Michigan jobs to do, but it's it's got Alaskan jobs done and it's got Timir jobs done. Potting around then all sorts. Which sounds fun, but isn't always the best idea because once you you know, if you get to Timir and you're trying to do things and I still on that side try and do it so it's Russian trucks in Russia, American trucks in America. If you're not high enough level, you've not unlocked necessarily the upgrades for the uh, the Russian and Eurasian trucks, or even un un unlocked the trucks. And you don't have all the wealth either, obviously. Again, this trailer is unnecessarily large. This is a single barrel of fuel for delivery. 
I don't think, well, I know we're not going to have the time to uh, get it delivered. Or at least I don't think we will. It's going to take me more than three minutes. So it's going to take more than an hour. And we're not going to have an hour to spare when we get there. So if we do have extra time at the end, it may be a case of an early finish and then having that little extra time for the next the next day. Slowly weaning ourselves round to that seven o'clock start, seven o'clock finish. But I think I would prefer, without even it being a deliberate thing, it's just how the jobs are falling. Although that is it, that is our time there. So we almost made it, almost got there. <laughs> so next time out, we will be starting off with that uh, contest. Get that done. Uh, this one is one that we'll, pro we'll only do this one once. This isn't one that we're going to do multiple times to try and earn money, just because it's a bit of a... It's not a difficult one. It's just a bit of a chore driving out there to pick up one, one cargo and driving all the way back with the sort of vehicles that we have here. If we had a smaller vehicle, say we had the Fleet Star in here, then it just sort of hoss about back and forth. That'd be easier. But we've not got that, and I want to bring it in here just to do that. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this one. We got a bit done. It was a little bit risky in places. Quite fun. Uh, if you did enjoy it, give a big thumbs up down below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn the bell notification on, find out when new videos are going live. As always, comments and feedback down there. You guys have a wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.